Welcome back to Vogar the Viking, and now it's time for the next level. Get, get, get going. Well, this place has seen better days. Welcome to the Blighted Lands, home of pestilence, death, and zombies. Lots and lots of zombies. So the zombie enemy is pretty basic. All he does is shamble around and uh, doesn't really do a whole lot. Unless you attack its bottom half, which its top half is going to fly off and attack you. And keeping with the color-coded theme, here's our green-colored skeleton man person. A flesh wound. Uh, the flesh wounds don't do a whole lot. They just stand there menacingly with their shields. And uh, the best way to take them out is to attack their lower half. Which, they usually spawn in areas where there's zombies, so... They, it, it, they're sort of there to trick you into slicing a uh, zombie in half. So be careful when you do that. Here's our blue skeleton man, the McStabby. Uh, the McStabby is just a step up from the flesh wound because he comes with a sword and he swings it. And that's it. That's, that's his improvement. And here's the heavy hitter of the level, the Skelly Hyphen Ton, which is the toughest enemy in the entire game, minus the bosses, which takes a whopping eight hits to kill. And the way that he behaves is basically the way that the level one boss behaved. He'll send out a shockwave, and uh, all you have to do is jump over it. And in this one particular encounter, you don't want to set up your spears to be on the exact uh, height of the platform, because if you do that, you're going to end up extending his shockwave. And you don't want to do that. So always set your spears a little low. We don't want to open that chest just yet. Instead, we're going to use it as a stepping stone, so that way we can get the other chest that's just up there. Just give, give me a second. I got this. I'll figure it out in a second. There you go. And here's the Red Skeleton Man with the coolest name out of the three, Sergeant Crunch. And what Sergeant Crunch does is he'll swing his sword twice, and then after the second swing, he'll jump over you. And uh, all you have to do is just roll underneath his jump, and you'll be just fine. Trying to get that McStabby to trigger, so that way I don't have to bother fighting him when I get on that platform. Now I could proceed forward, but instead of going forward, we're going to backtrack a little bit, so that way we can get the magic hammer of the level, and uh, I think maybe one chest. I don't remember quite well. We'll find out when we get there. And now that we have the hammer, we can head on back the other way. Oh. 
So one thing that you can do with the flesh wounds is that you can throw spears into their shields and they'll stick there for a while. And you can stand on top of those and catch a ride, which we're going to do to get this chest. So this encounter with the Skeleton is sort of set up in the way that it makes it really hard to throw spears at it, or at least it, it doesn't make it really obvious. What you could do is just jump from where I'm standing right now and throw spears regularly, and that would count. But uh, I was trying to... I don't really know what I was trying to do. I ended up using my hammer anyway, so meh. So we're going to head inside and meet the Booberries. And as much as I want Vogar to be a part of this complete breakfast, uh, Booberries are actually ghosts. Ghosts that spawned at random, and they sort of gravitate towards you whenever they move. They'll move a little bit, and if they don't catch you in time, they'll end up despawning after a while. But it's always a good idea to get rid of them as fast as possible, so that way they're, they don't mess you up. Because uh, of their little strange movement patterns, being ghosts and whatever. Once you take care of the skeleton, right behind him is a magic hammer. So, there's your second hammer location for the level. So the second half of this level sort of geared towards spear traps. There's going to be a lot of them throughout this entire section. And uh, they're all pretty obvious patterns anyway, so there's no trouble there. Just got to be really careful though. Especially on the Valkyrie run. You know what I'm saying. Like, here is, like, the most complicated uh, spear trap they have in this part. And really, all you have to do is just wait for, like, two seconds extra, and you'll, you'll make it out. So this next part can be done in two ways. We're going to start with the bottom way first because it's the most interesting. Up ahead you'll see a series of spike traps that are popping up at random times. So what you're going to need to do is not kill that flesh room that's just up ahead. And you're going to throw a spear into him. And you can pretty much guess what we're going to do with it. We're going to ride the spear all the way to the end. So flipping over to the top path, all you have to do is just climb these chains and watch out for the spiders. So this next part seems like you need to drop down, stay crouch, and roll around a bunch of times to get to the bottom. But it's really easier than that. All you have to do is wait, jump, hold down. And that's it. Now it's time for the boss. So this boss's pattern is pretty easy to comprehend. He starts off by shooting three energy balls at you. All you have to do is just use spear platforms to dodge it. 
After that, he's going to start swooping through the bottom half of the arena. All you have to do is just stay in the middle and stay crouched. And lastly, he'll stop for a moment, exposing himself for some damage dealing, and he'll summon up a flesh wound. Uh, after a while, he'll start summoning McStabbies, but that only happens after a couple of cycles, so don't have to worry about that too much. And that's his entire pattern. And that about does it for this video. Hope to catch you next time. See ya.